hello and welcome to Kanyiri vlogs it's the beginning of autumn and diseases are coming into my garden oh no today i'm going to show you what's happening to my tomatoes and how you can identify this disease if it comes to your garden Well, it's the early blight disease. It's a common soil-borne fungus that is passed on to plants when the rain hits the soil with impact, causing the soil to splash onto the lower part of the plant. Fungus are made up of spores and they thrive well in humid, rainy and hot areas. As the season is changing from summer to autumn, it's just the perfect, perfect time for the fungus to start growing into the soil. So how do you identify this disease? Well, basically, as you can see, most of my plants have dark brown spots on the leaves and the stems. They have like sort of a yellowing and the stems is looking um, brownish. It has some parts which are black with white spots. It can have some concentric leathery sunken rings around it. I mean, the leaves just look unsightly. Well, early blight disease can affect mature and also even immature fruits. So it can, it can affect at any stage of the growing uh, duration. So what can you do when your plants are affected? One, you can remove the plants completely as you see me doing and just put them away in the trash. Do not use them as compost as this fungus can move from plant to plant. We have another disease which is called the late, late blight disease. This disease is very deadly. This is not like the early blight disease. That one will completely kill your plants. But with early blight disease, your plants can still survive, but uh, it will potentially impact on your harvest. So you expect to have a low, lower harvest that, that season. What else can you do to prevent your plants from having this disease? Number one, choosing the right variety to grow. If you choose the right variety, which is resistant to this early blight disease, 90% it might not affect your plants. But as I said, it is a very common disease in tomatoes and potatoes as well. Number two, you can remove all plants and weeds before replanting. So for instance, when this harvest, when I finish harvesting this season, I will not plant anything until I have cleared out all the leaves from my garden. Number three, spacing and rotation of planting. Next time I plant anything on this soil, it's not going to be tomatoes. Rotating your plants can actually help the soil and it will reduce the chances of the blight coming back again. So I might probably plant something different from tomatoes in the next coming planting season. 
Number four, do not water your plants from above. Avoid watering your plants from above because this will uh, cause the splashing of the soil onto the leaves and this will eventually cause the fungus to start thriving again. So as you can see, most of my leaves have been affected and what I'm doing now is just identifying the the, the leaves that have been affected and removing them. As the plant is coming to the end of its season, I do not intend on using any chemicals or anything to get rid of the disease. As I said, it, ha it still has pot potential, potential of survival and uh, I will still have my harvest even though my harvest will be a lot less than I expected. After I have removed all the leaves, so now the plant can, all the nutrients and water can concentrate towards the ripening of the fruits rather than trying to deal with the disease and trying to cope with the disease. So all the water and all the nutrients is going straight into the tomato and helping the fruit ripen quicker rather than try to heal from the fungal infection. Another way of helping the disease stop spreading you could actually make your own homemade uh, uh, what, uh, spray that you can uh, apply on your leaves and this can help the, uh, stop the spreading of the disease. You can um, mix one gallon of water with three tablespoons of baking soda then add one tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't have olive oil you could use an organic dish soap and this helps the water to attach itself on the leaves and uh, eventually the pH of the the pH of the soil of the pH is going to be altered and the fungal will not be able to thrive in the altered pH so as you can see most of my plants the stems are looking um, very very unsightly but that is okay because I will still have my harvest, the plant is not going to die. It will still, um, it will still continue to 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 give uh, fruits as long as I keep removing those affected leaves. So I'm removing also the tomatoes that has been infected with the fungal disease and I'm going to be putting everything in the bin. Yeah, so the good thing, it's not the end of my plants. There is still potential of ha ha having a good harvest. And I'm still looking forward to 
eating those nice, delicious, refreshing tomatoes. Just make sure after you have finished uh, removing all these branches you need to also clean your hands very well because as I said these fungal uh, spores they can uh, transfer very easily they could transfer from insects uh, they can be transferred by insects they can be transferred by wind they can be transferred from soil to soil or even by human beings so you need to wash your hands very well and also clean clean your body clean your clothes so I'm done with removing all the bad bad leaves and now I need to look after my growing tomatoes and make sure that they grow healthy So thank you so much guys thank you for staying and watching to the end i truly appreciate that and i'll see you in my next one